Hello, welcome to the next video in the Game Audio Tech Tips series. Um, for this one, we're going to look at expanding on the spatial audio volumes. Um, so this is mainly aimed for sound designers or teams that don't necessarily have like code support. Um, so, you know, um, if you need to give extra features to spatial audio, um, then we'll look at some ways to do that. Um, so I'm just going to get started then for the video. So for this one, we're basically, we're going to look at some kind of, um, active component, um, that's going to be used as like a controller and it's going to be used to essentially stop sounds. So if we just play a sound on this, uh, river, um, volume, for example, um, you can hear the sound, it's spatialized, it's using spatial audio. Um, and then if I go to... Uh, and uh, wise, we can see that it's playing. Yep. Uh, just this. So we can see our sound there. That's fine. And when we run away, get further from the volume, the sound will essentially be sent to virtual um, but we can see that this um, is still holding up resources so the sound is still playing it's in virtual um, but it's like clogging up our viewport um, and it's still processing stuff on the audio thread um, so what we're going to try and do here is essentially when we're out of attenuation range um, we're just going to stop the sound and essentially what we're doing is taking the CPU off of the audio thread and just front loading it onto like the game thread that's pretty much the objective here um so yeah that's what we're going to do um so rather than post it on here we're still going to leave it exposed because for the room component in the volume to actually follow and move around there has to be an event assigned into here so if it's if it's cleared that game object just won't exist. So um, for the for the case of this uh, video, we're just gonna have an event. It doesn't have to be this event. It could be an empty event. Um, and it, it's purely there just to basically enable the, the following uh, room emitter. So we're not actually gonna post that event. It's just a workaround for, the, um, for it to run. And the first thing we're gonna look at then is a component that we can use for like an overlap. So we're going to do two things. One is going to be the distance attenuation, um, and the other is going to be an overlap. Okay. So let's make a blueprint class act component. PP underscore spatial audio volume. Let's just call it controller. That's fine. And then over here, my head's covering it. But we're going to add. Um, I'll do this. So we've got this little add button here to add a component. And we're going to add our spatial audio volume controller. So now this component is uh, added to this actor. Um, because this actor we want to uh, control. It doesn't have to be on all of them. Um, you can make an editor utility widget to add them all if you want to do that. Or you can add them on just the ones you need. Again, if, if there was a program in support, you would expand this in the um the actual c++ class itself probably um but we're not programmers so we're just gonna look at ways to expand it um you know through uh, blueprints um so for now i'm just gonna delete tick and then what we want to do on begin play is we want to um cast to uh spatial audio volume okay and then we're going to do that from the get owner. So we are a actor component and we need to get our owner. And then essentially we're just going to verify if our owner is a spatial audio volume or not. Um, and then if it is, we're going to set this um, as a variable. Um, and then what we want to do next is just grab that and we want to see what kind of, uh, we want to see what we can bind to. Um, so we're going to search for bind here. 
And then we get these events called bind events to on to begin overlap. So this is essentially uh, how we're going to drive the um, the overlap functionality, the, the stage one for it. Because um, you might not care about the distance fall off, you might just want an instant ambient switch. Um, so let's do that. So let's do on begin begin overlap. And again, let's look for what else we can bind. And we can do end overlap. And this is coming from the collision um, component. So these rooms are made up of several components. And, you know, on one of those components is the typical collision. Um, so let's make a custom event and call it um, begin overlap and end overlap. Okay. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to get play a character because we're just going to use the character in this case. And we want to check the actor that overlaps us is it the play character. Because um, in this case, we ne we don't necessarily care about other actors like that might overlap. We just want to make sure that it's the player character. Um, so we can just copy that again. Like that. And we want to verify, before we do anything else, we just want to verify it works. So in this case, I'll use print strings. Um... But we will talk later about why you probably normally wouldn't. Although these are, in this case, this makes sense. So let's see what happens then. <clears throat> let's uh, do this. Mm, there we go. That's what I want. <clears throat> okay, so we're not getting, we're not getting the overlaps trigger. So there's something wrong. So let's have a look. So what that might be is the collision properties of the volume. So we can see here by default, it's done everything as custom. Usually I'd say never have custom, but for this, the case of this video, we're going to still stick with it. But you probably should use some kind of preset like a trigger or make your own, which is probably better. Make your own for specifically for these volumes. Um, but for now, we're just going to overlap with pawn and let's see what happens. Still not getting any overlap triggering. So again, there's something wrong. And we need to make sure that generate overlap events is enabled. So now our deep our debug prints are telling us beginner end. And if we go into the blueprint, we can see that as well. If I just come out and back in again, let's have a look. There we go, begin and end. So we, we can verify now that it works. Um so that's cool. So what we want to do next is we want to play a sound on that room component, yeah. So we're gonna do we're gonna get uh, room the room variable, and dragging from the room we want to post event. Now we have to do this one specifically because it's gonna target a game object. We don't want to use the typical post event and then feed in like an actor. We don't want to do that. We want to post it. We want to use this one specifically. Okay. And in terms of events, let's just copy this because we're going to need that again here. Um, so we could like set them like this. We can do a hard set like that. And we can verify this works. So we've overlapped, it's going to play the river. We've, we're no longer overlapping, it's going to stop the sound. So that's cool, we, we know that it's worked. So that's fine. Um, however, let's just make these variables. Um, and then we're going to call this start event. Yeah, that's fine. And stop event. Cool. And because we promoted these when they're already set, it's going to remember what we set. So we're just going to clear these for now. Okay, on comp and then we're going to compile that. And then on the actual uh, act component itself here, um, we're going to make this public. And then now we can, they're exposed to us here. So we're just going to do it on the individual instance in the, in the level, in the actor. 
Okay, and then we're going to say the. Cool. So this is how we can do the overlap section of this tutorial. So that is kind of okay. Um, what we're going to look at next is using like a fall off uh, version of it instead, because we might not just want overlaps. We might want to do something else um, where the sound waits for you to exit attenuation range and then stops. So that's what we're going to look at next. Um, so yeah, let's do that then. So let's make a variable and we're going to use, use overlaps. We're going to make that public and it's going to be a Boolean. Dog is gonna, you can hear someone outside, so you might bark. Uh, use overlaps. And what we're doing here then, if we want to use overlaps, then we are gonna bind these um, because obviously they're, they're required for that. Um, if we don't wanna use overlaps and we wanna use the attenuation version, then we don't wanna make these bindings. So what we're gonna do instead is by default, we're going to turn tick off um, and we're going to set tick enabled true if use overlaps is false. So if we don't care about the overlaps and we just want the attenuation, then we're going to enable tick. Okay. And then we're going to actually get our tick event here. Okay. So that's that then. Um, Nice. So what do we want to do? Um, we want to get our distance on the volume. And if it's over a certain range, we want to do something. So first thing we want to do is get, uh, do this. And we want to get our brush component because the brush will give us a function called closest point on collision. Now this is important for us because this will allow us to get the closest point on the, on the brush volume to our character. So we're gonna now do get play character. Get active location. And that's it. <clears throat> okay, so to test, we want to test this works before we do anything else actually. So let's draw a debug line. And we're going to go from the point on the body to our point here. Yeah. And let's just give it a thickness of two so we can see what we're doing. So we can see here then that this this volume that we that we have in the world, we can see that we're tracking our closest point on the collision. So we can verify that this function works. And actually that's what this does. It returns the distance and the closest point to the collision surface. So we're pretty much using this to drive our data. Um cool. So <clears throat> That's it then. So we want to get our closest point. We want to branch from there. And we want to get something else. We want to get our start event. Now from the event, we can do something called um, get max attenuation radius. So what this will do is this will actually check the event and get the, the attenuation radius. So if it's 10 meters, 20 meters, it doesn't matter. Um, this will provide us that uh, range. So if our closest point, the distance to the closest point in the character, if that's greater than this attenuation radius, um, we want to do something. And in this case, um, we want to stop the sound. So we want to do this. And if we're not, we want to play the sound. Now what will happen in this case is if we just play now, this is going to, um, every tick is going to play that sound, which we don't want to do. Um, so let's make our, let's make some functionality then to stop that from happening. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to basically build like a do once. Yep. So it's playing as uh, false by default. Cool. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is if we are not playing, we're going to set it to true and then we're going to play. Yeah, so if we're under the distance threshold, this attenuation radius, we're going to check are we playing false, then we're going to set we are playing now, um, and we're going to play the event. And then up here, we're going to basically do the opposite. So if we, um, if we are playing, we're going to set it to false, and then we're going to stop. And then essentially what we've what we've done here is we've just built our own do once, um, but in 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 this way, which is better for us. Um, and because we have different functionality here in different places now, we can go ahead and make a function. So this can be called like start sounds, yeah, and this can be called. Stop sounds because we have stop event and start event here. And again, we have this as functions now. So uh, let's just do it this way. So that is a good case of um, using functions. Whenever you have different, um, like the same thing in different places, we want to make them functions so they can reuse that code. Okay, so let's see them. Um, let's see if it works. So, use overlaps off by default. Cool. So, we're going to press play. Our sound is playing. And we can see in the background there, our debugging is um, showing us that we're doing that do once logic. So, it's not going past this uh, branch anymore. And then, when we go out of attenuation radius. It's now triggered the stop sounds of them and come back into range and it's there as well and then let, just to verify that let's go out of range again and then flip the wires and our event is not there anymore so we're not using the audio thread anymore to virtualize a voice and check distance or anything like that it's now just stopped it so now all the cpu overhead is um on the unreal side and the game game CPU. Now that we are in range, now we are back on the audio thread again because we want to be there. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. So <clears throat> this kind of works now, but um, what we want to do next is like make it uh, build in some debugging. Yeah. Um, so we just want to like clean this up a little bit and build on um, some debugging. So let's just make some categories for us. Um, so we're going to make some categories where all this stuff's going to go in. That can just go there. So our public facing stuff can go in its own little category. Um, and we want to do some debugging now. Um, so let's make a function called show debug. Okay. And on tick, we're going to run this function. Um, and actually, I just want to explain something as well. Is I used to run a function. And I would put a boolean in here saying like uh, debug and then I would get that and then branch and if our debugging was set to true and we would do some like drawing of stuff. Um, but actually what I found using Unreal Insights um, was just running that function and then doing a boolean check was actually quite performant um, because what happens is when you even if you have code outside of this boolean check, because it's in the function, um, to run the function, it needs to grab all of those like variables and like prepare them essentially. So um, that actually turned out to be not a good practice. So although it looks cleaner, what we really should be doing is more like this. So we need to ask first, are we, do we want to debug? Yes. And then if we do, we're going to draw the debug. And then that way, we're not running functions that we don't need to run. Um, 
so yeah if you're not using unreal insights for anything then i really would like recommend getting into it and you can find loads of like different use cases of like ways to improve your, your performance and things like that because it's not necessarily clear um so so yeah so the draw debug then so what do we want to draw um the first thing we want to we might care about is like the the line that we did before so um let's say draw debug line and then what that's going to ask us for is some start and end points so <clears throat> we could copy this stuff in again and we could you know copy this and this and then draw our lines um but copying this is probably not a good idea because um uh, brush component uh, sorry no we want to copy we want to get that point don't we yeah so copying this uh stuff is just not ideal because if we change it in one place we're gonna have to change it in multiple places so what we're going to do instead is um this point here we're going to promote that to a variable and we're gonna actually we're gonna do it here no, let's not do it like that we're gonna do it here instead uh promote variable we're gonna set it here so we're gonna every tick this is a this is something that's gonna change every tick right our character position is gonna change um so we want to make sure that we're setting this as a variable and we're gonna call this um we could call it player actor location or player location um let's just for now call it actor location because it might not necessarily be the player it might be like the, the listener or something else so we don't know that yet so because we don't know that um let's keep it quite flexible in our, in our namings here so let's say actor location and what we're going to do is you could plug that in here that's fine um or you could do it like this which is something that i like to do um cool so we're onto something here now and what else is likely to change um our point on the our closest point is likely to change because if our character changes our point is going to change so again um let's set this to be a variable and um Again, let's call this closest point. So let's just do that. And we also care about our distance because whenever we change our position, the distance is also going to change. So um, let's make this a variable as well. So anything that's dynamic is, is going to change, right? Um, whereas like this attenuation radius, this isn't going to change. This is just something that we pull once. So we're okay to to, to ask for it in this way um, if we need it later on which we will do for the debugging we're just going to copy it um, if you don't want to do that we can do something like put it in the begin play and then set it once there so we, we could do something like that but for now we're just going to leave it like that and then this one is going to give us a um, if you look at here it's going to return the distance so we're going to call this one distance yeah because that's what we care about and then because this line is going into two places, we're not happy with that. So again, um, we could do that or we can be better and do this because that's nicer. Um, cool. Yep, that's okay. So let's go to our debug then, our debug function. And if our debugging is true, uh, let's just put it on just hard override like that for now. Um, really, that should be a public thing like that. Put it into audio. And then now it will show on our actor in the, in the scene. In fact, yeah, let's do that. Let's turn debugging off so we don't get told off. And put debugging on here. And actually, um, something else that we could do as well is um, if we make it a subcategory, like that so use the line down and then debug um we can see here on our um there's now a little drop down here for the debug so it's like hidden away um typically so it's less likely to be pressed by accident or whatever um okay so show debug then we want to draw a line 
let's just for example um draw a purple line and let's do two thickness again and we care about the actor location and the closest point so this is basically what we had before um but this time we're going to do it in this uh, draw function so let's just see if that works there we go so now we have a nice purple line that we're drawing um between the the distance that we care about and our closest point cool um and again so the reason why we're drawing debug now is because we don't want to print we don't want to print string right because print string is cool for like little tests but if we have like five different volumes in the scene we don't want those volumes all printed to screen because it's just not clear like where the where those prints are coming from so by drawing the debug we, we can have a better understanding of what we're like debugging um and what else might we care about we might care about like a draw sphere so again um what do we care about the closest point and let's just do like a purple sphere of like a 10 radius or something so that now when we're debugging here there's like some like a nicer clearer point of reference between where our like emitter is okay and we can see in wise as well um we can see uh, Where is it? We can see there that the um, it's following. It's not in the middle of the volume. It's actually following our like uh, tape. So if we go over here now, it's now moved moved to here. It was there before that. So we we can confirm then that um, we can confirm that the. Uh, this stuff is working in game and in wise now and it's always good to as well just build into as much context as you can with debugging so what do we care about next we might care about some kind of like text so let's draw debug string and you could you could append some stuff here so like we could append some 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 strings together and like format them like this um but something i've not shown yet is another thing called format text um, so this is more expensive to like to run um but if you're just doing this for debugging anyway it's totally fine so let's do a let's do a format text because again like i've not shown this before and i think i think it can be cool to to just show off like we're all about learning on this channel so let's just learn some new stuff and again we're gonna pick the closest point on our uh, location to draw it so what do we want to what do we want to show then so um we might want the name of the volume so let's do name equals name and this is a squiggly line and we'll see what that would do if i press enter now it's made an input here for us called name so the squiggly line is what this what this input is and the text name equals is going to be what we draw in the world and um, what else might we care about we might care about like distance so let's do some like distance and then again, let's uh, expose that to us here as a squiggly line input. And we might also care about the attenuation because we might care about, we might want to know what the attenuation range that we're trying to uh, um, do the sound for. So let's just call that a 10. And what we might want to do as well is at the top, if you press shift enter, it just brings it down a level um, because the sphere that we have, um, that we're drawing that's gonna like interfere with our like string so by just forcing it down a line it's just it's just a cheeky way of like not not getting in the way of the severe um so yeah so that's that then so for the name uh we might care about like the volume name so let's do that and do like uh, name. let's just do that now that's fine yeah object name the distance we already have from uh, our cheeky little um, function here. We're already exposing that variable, so we can use it in the debugging now. Again, because we need this in two places, we're setting it once and using it in different places. And the attenuation range, um, this isn't going to change. 
So we want attenuation radius there. And again, if we don't want that bit of code in two places, we can set it once on like an, a begin play. We can make like an init function and then we can get that variable and use it. But let's just do it like this for now. And let's just see then what that looks like. So now we have the name of our like spatial audio volume. So if there was two or four or eight of these volumes, um, all of them can be drawn on that. And we know exactly the distance between um, that we have here. We, we can see the distance that we're setting. Um, and we know because we're drawing debug what void, what con we have more contacts, a better understanding of rather than print to string, like print to screen from all these different actors, we're drawing it. So I would always recommend drawing debug wherever you can. Don't use prints. Um, so yeah, this is arguably like feature complete now. So this is really cool. Um, but there's still some things that we can do better. So what can we do better? Um, our name is purple, which is which is fine. Um, but when we come out of our distance range, we, kn we know that the sound is toggled off. Like we've stopped the sound and um, it's, it's, it's stopped in wise, um, but the debugging is still purple. Now that's okay, it might not matter. Um, but rather than like print to screen now saying the sound has stopped because again we don't want to do print print to screen print to screens we don't like that. So what we can do then is we need to change the color of this text when we're outside of that radius. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? So we can do that then. So let's um, look to do that. Let's make a new variable called is in range. Or actually we could. Um, Actually, we could just use is playing. Yeah, that would be better then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So rather than having multiple variables, we can just use the ones that we've already got. So we're going to get is playing. Now, something else that I that I that I see quite a lot is um, branching to do certain things. So like, for example, we might do like. Is branch true, then yes, then we're gonna have this one as purple, and then if it's not, we're gonna have this one as red. Um uh, that's blue, let's just do uh let's just do red. So you know you might see this before, so like yes, we're gonna have have it as purple if we're we're playing and then red if not. And that that that's okay, it would work fine, um, but it, it looks quite messy. Um so what we're gonna do instead of a branch we're going to just select a different color. So we're going to give this um, a, a select to, to choose from essentially. So to do that, we're going to go down here and say select. And um, this now is expecting like a wildcard into it. So if, if we plug that into text, it's now changed these to, um, to text. I'm sorry, to color, text color. So if we're true, we're going to say purple. And if we're false, so we're not playing, we're going to use red. Okay. And it, we're going to use that for everything. So we don't just care about like, um, we don't just care about the the text that we're drawing. We care about all of it, like the, the sphere and the line. So we're in range. We are playing. And then when we go out of, Attenuation radius is playing is going to be toggled to false, and now our debugging is red. So why is that important? Let's just copy this like that, and then put this one like over there. And because I copied it, it will have the boolean on it as well. So now it is a good case of two different debugging that we have, and one is red because it's out of range, and one is purple because it's in range. So rather than print to screen, uh, rather than print string. And we have not much context to that. We can now visually see which ones uh, are important to us. So we're both, you know? Yeah, always recommend just drawing um, draw debug, like always draw debug, because um, it's just better. And um, these videos always gone for so long, so I'm not going to do this now. But what we need to also think about is validation, because, um, for example, we're asking things like, uh, get this start event. So if you reference my videos from my on the channel, 
you'll see the video about validating actors. So obviously if if we need to validate um, this start event because actually what happens if, if there isn't a start event? So on this actor, um, what happens if, if this start event isn't set? So we need to make sure that whenever we're using these blue colors in Unreal, always make sure that you're validating. So do check out the other video on validating actors. Um, and then one last thing I'd like to say before I go as well, is there's another video I have um, that mentions about tick by distance. So if, if we are at uh, this range, for example, we're still setting the, um, like we're still doing things uh, on tick. So we're still setting our distance and our closest point location on tick. So we might not need to do that. So um, yeah, so what I'd recommend is watch that tick by distance uh, video because when we're further away, we can afford to slow that tick down. So we, when we're at 4,000 units, we might only do it like 0.1. So there'll be some kind of lag, there'll be some kind of disconnect between what Wise is doing and what we're doing. Um, but it's still better to just slow the CPU down, uh, the, slow the processing down a little bit, and then um, just optimize a little bit as well. So yeah, just you know, go ahead and um, watch those videos. And yeah, I hope you found this useful. Um, if there's any other um, ideas that anyone has for future videos, do let me know, and we can um, we can look to do those. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Actually, I lied a little bit. I just wanted sh just to show something to clarify. So this play river spline, if I don't have an event on there, um, there's nothing. Nothing happens because actually, what you see in wires is this room component isn't set up properly to follow us. So even though we're not using the event here and we're posting our own one, that component doesn't exist properly. Um, so for wise to make that component, um, that is why this river, this has to be set. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to river it, it could be any other sound, um, but just make sure you don't post it because obviously when you post the wise one, we're not going to then stop it. So just have that there just as a means for wires to kick in the, the component. And then again, if I press play, it works now. Um, and it does all the stuff where it follows us. Uh, if I click live, now we see it's following us, yeah? So um, yeah, just just make sure that, that was, I just thought I wanted to clarify that just to avoid any confusion. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a hacky workaround, but you know, we, we, it's just the nature of it. We just have to set that.